The activity in the Russia-Ukraine war is increasing day by day. Violent clashes are now taking place in almost all of the occupied territories, especially in Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. We are constantly seeing clouds of smoke over these regions due to the explosions. The new year started with many major events. The Ukrainian army expelled most of the invaders from the Eastern Front. Russian troops suffered many casualties in the first hours of the new year. Let's take a look at the activity in the eastern region. The war intensified in the city of Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. Important events that will change the course of the war are taking place in Bakhmut. Major clashes took place in Bakhmut on New Year's Eve. Russia has deployed a large number of troops in this region. Putin plans to occupy this region and expand into Ukraine. But Ukraine does not allow this play. Russian troops had made preparations in the Zaitseva settlement in Bakhmut. They aimed to advance towards Bakhmut from this region on New Year's Eve. But there was something they did not calculate. The Ukrainian army, thanks to its strong agency, knew that the Russians were deployed in this area. The Ukrainian Air Force was targeting the Russian bases in Zaitseva with mid artillery and missile systems. Minutes before New Year's Eve, Russian troops mobilized. The Ukrainian army responded without delay. Artillery systems and missiles hit the bases of the Russian invaders. On New Year's Eve, Ukrainian troops did not let the Russian invaders pass. The successful operations of the Ukrainian Air Force repelled the Russian troops in Bakhmut. The Zaitseva settlement in the Bakhmut region had offered significant advantages to Russian troops in terms of terrain. Due to its location, this region was high up and had many areas to hide. Russia's withdrawal from Zaitseva brought many disadvantages to the Russian army. The soldiers who withdrew from the region became open targets. Russia may be exposed to many attacks as it withdraws from this region. Having failed on the eastern front and forced to retreat, Russia turned to the south. Russian troops planned to advance from Bakhmut towards Donetsk. The movement between these two regions did go noticed by the Ukrainian army. On New Year's Eve, the Ukrainian army deployed HIMARS missile systems on the route between Bakhmut and Donetsk and at strategic points in the city. Russian troops heading towards Donetsk were targeted by these missiles. All Russian attempts to advance were successfully blocked by Ukraine. The Russian army suffered heavy losses against Ukraine on New Year's Eve. Ukraine, which successfully advanced in Bakhmut and Donetsk regions, also established superiority in Makivka. The Ukrainian army had recently taken control of the connecting bridge between Donetsk and Makivka from the invaders. The superiority achieved here showed itself on New Year's Eve. Hours before New Year's Eve, the Ukrainian army deployed HIMARS missile systems targeting important points in this region. Ukrainian ground operation teams and special forces were also ready for the attack. The expected moment had arrived. The Ukrainian Air Force launched the attack. HIMARS missiles destroyed a very important military base in the region. Minutes before the new year, Ukraine also achieved a great success in Makivka. The base targeted by Ukraine in Makivka was a very important base for Russian troops. It is said that more than 700 Russian soldiers and three senior Russian commanders are staying at this base. It is also claimed that there are tons of ammunition at the base. The HIMARS targeting these munitions also increased the intensity of the explosion. On New Year's Eve, a huge fireball rose in the skies over Makivka. It is estimated that Russia lost hundreds of soldiers in this attack. Russia suffered a major setback in the war by losing its base in Makivka. The figures given by Russian sources about this attack are quite different. Russia announced that it lost 63 soldiers in this attack, but the facts are said to be different. Residents of the Makivka region have made claims contrary to the Russian account. They said that dozens of trucks came to the area after the attack and took away hundreds of Russian corpses. An eyewitness at the scene confirmed this. The eyewitness said that there were many bodies in the trucks and that some of the bodies overflowed and fell out of the trucks. Former Russian commander Igor Gherkin also made a statement about the Makivka attack. 
In a message posted on his Telegram account, Gherkin wrote that hundreds of people were killed and wounded in the attack in Makivka. Another statement came from Ukrainian military officials. Some 400 Russian soldiers were killed and about 300 wounded in the attack, they said. The incident deeply affected Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Putin had planned to advance to Donetsk via Bakhmut, but was forced to retreat in both areas. After this, the attack on the base in Makivka and Putin did not know what to do. Moreover, the soldiers in Makivka were preparing for a major operation. Russian soldiers in Makivka were going to attack Horlivka in the coming days. They were preparing to attack with artillery systems and missiles. But Russia lost all its ammunition in the region as a result of the successful attack of the Ukrainian Air Force. The Ukrainian army achieved two major successes with this attack. First, it prevented the Russian invaders from crossing to Bakhmut via Makivka. Secondly, the attack on Horlivka was prevented and a great danger was averted. At the same time, Russia's loss of military personnel and ammunition is pushing the Ukrainian army forward. The Russian army has suffered a great loss of motivation after this heavy loss. Most Russian soldiers do not want to fight anyway. Many soldiers are fighting under compulsory mobilization. Russian people also organized many protests after this attack. The majority of Russians do not support Putin's decision to invade. That's why the streets of Russia are in turmoil. Putin, the Russian leader, is using the Russian security forces at the slightest demonstration or protest. People who oppose the occupation are fined and imprisoned. Television channels broadcasting against the occupation are either shut down or fined. Putin's reputation is diminishing day by day. The war raging in the eastern region has spread to the south of Bakhmut. Russia redirected the Wagner Group troops stationed in Donetsk to the south of Bakhmut. The Ukrainian army reinforced its troops in this area with reinforcements. There may be a major clash south of Bakhmut in the coming days. We are following the activity south of Bakhmut. What awaits Russia south of Bakhmut? We don't know yet, but one thing is clear. Russia is getting weaker every day. It cannot find soldiers and ammunition to fight. Most of the soldiers in the Russian army surrender to Ukrainian troops at the first chance they get. Russian soldiers announce their surrender with video posts. The people of Russia have also risen up against the occupation. Anti-occupation demonstrations and protests are taking place on the streets of Russia every day. Although Putin uses security forces to prevent this situation, he is not successful. The setback in the occupation of Ukraine has brought down Putin's reputation. The people have now accepted that he will lose in the war. Putin, on the other hand, is not giving up the idea of invasion for his own political career. We will see how the war will progress in the new year. Do you think Russia will withdraw completely from the eastern region? How will Putin compensate for these losses? How do you interpret the successes of the Ukrainian army? We are interested in your opinion.